morning. Right, we are just um, about well five minutes from a place called Base Mechanics up in Pramlton. We're just picking a car up there to bring back to our place for Paul to put a new wiring harness in. That's a, a, like an old classic Beetle. I think I mentioned that in the last video. I was supposed to get it on Friday, but I just ran out of time at the end. So small the customer, they were happy to come and get it today. Um, what else have I got? Also got a little Bolingo van to pick up. At the roundabout, from, take the first exit onto Fisher Lane. Um, Dunstan, which is not too far from the garage. But what I'm going to try and do is get this beetle right up tight to the bulkhead so I can get the Bolingo on the back, hopefully. Um, it'd be nice if I didn't have to make two trips because then I would just go straight from here down the A1, off sort of towards the Metro Centre, collect the little Bolingo on the way back and then straight back to the garage. In three quarters of a mile, um, at the roundabout, take the second exit onto Station Road. So, 50 mile per hour speed limit camera ahead. I think this guy wants a job. Um, so basically once I get this little beetle on, we'll head back down towards uh, Dunstan, pick that Bolingo van up and we'll see you back in the garage. Cheers. The little old beetle is on. Let's go. Trying to frighten us or something. What day is it, Ed? What day is it? Wednesday. It's Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah, Craigie. Bloody hell. Even everybody. Like a, like a ghost town in here. Um, end of the day as usual. Everybody's got home. Uh, so we'll just have a look and see what we've got going on for tomorrow. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. So uh, that's a snap one, man. Um, when we have a look in a minute, you'll see there's a, there's a new toolbox there. Um, so one of the new, I think we've said a couple of times, the new technicians that's starting on Monday, he's dropped his toolbox off, which is always a good sign because I think anybody, when you employ anybody, there's always that like worry perhaps. Um, but obviously there's any more commitment than the toolboxes here now. So yeah, yeah, he'll it, be ready to start on Monday. Um, but let, let's see, let's see. Um, uh, Jaguar uh, is an XF, yeah, XFR this one, yep. so it's the supercharged one, um, there's half of the superchargers there, uh, the superchargers are away getting um, repaired at the moment, so if you come in there you can see that, um, that's the, the sit in the middle of the V there, the supercharger takes up quite a lot of the, the, the middle of the V there, um, so it's, it's, it's a well packaged thing, you, we'll, we'll hopefully see in a couple of days time when we get the bits back. Um, if it going back together, you, you'll get a, an appreciation of, of how it sits in there. But um, but yeah, so it's supercharges we're getting getting fixed on that one at the minute. Um, not a lot we can do with them other than send them away uh, and get them fixed. Um, this van is the one for non-start. Um, it's got a, a timing chain problem on it. The turbos fail on it as well, which means it's not breathing. So um, it's the, you can hear it when the turbo was physically seized because it makes that horrible, it's like a squealing noise. Um, that is just literally waiting to start. Um, that, that's, that's in progress at the moment. Um, but we've had a little, bit of, a little bit of an overlap waiting for, for it to start in that um, the, the, the battery's gone flat on it. So we'll probably put a battery on it as well just to, just to make sure that, that, that the reliability's back on it there. So yeah, that, 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 one's, that one's in progress. Um, that's nothing to do with us, like I say, that's, that's the new technician that's starting on Monday, that's his car. So I obviously had a lot of gear on the back of it there, so he's brought it um, along with that. Um, nice little Vauxhall Adam. This one came in today for um, MOT test. It's failed on the two front tyres and also it's got a snap coil spring. Now, um, so that, that's, you know, and, and again, we, we see a lot of this um, on slightly older cars, because I mean, I think our Average age of car that we look after is probably between five and nine, nine years old, and um, and that one very much like it's not got a snap coil spring on. It's quite a common feel, right? Than that we see on, on older ones. Um, I think there's a little bit, couple of reasons for that. You know, the British roads at the minute, the potholes. Um, not but only that, it is it is a little bit older, so it's it's getting a 
two coil springs tomorrow. Um, some manufacturers recommend you replace them as a pair. Um, Vauxhall is, is one of the manufacturers. Um, but not only that, it's failed on, on one side coil spring and we've actually advised it that side's quite corroded. So again, it's, it's, it's good common sense, you know, we're looking after the customers that it, it's, they spend a little bit more at the minute, but you know, we'll put two on, then the car's right. You know, there's not the worry about the other side fracturing or the other side snapping, and then obviously it's got to come back again. So um, it, it, it's just common sense. Yeah, just common sense. So like I say, coil springs are on order for that. They'll be here with us tomorrow. Um, tires are already here, I believe. Um, and that'll get that'll get done tomorrow. Yeah, nice little, little box for Adam. Um, you, you'll recognise this one. Yeah, we, we see this one a lot. Um, it's it's still just a little bit plagued by water ingress. Um, probably a, a lot to do with the age of the vehicle, etc. And things like that. Because, but in saying that, I mean, it's a very very tidy car, very very tidy defender for its age. Um, but it's just plagued plagued by water ingress. So it's back again for that. Um, the, the customer of this one, the, um, the owner, he works offshore a lot. So what we'll try and do is we'll try and get it in while he's way offshore. Um, and then we'll do, you know, pick it up. We'll pick it up this morning uh, off, off his wife. And then um, we'll get it delivered back before he comes back back uh, back from being offshore. Um, that, that, it works best that way. Then they're not without the car. Um, and of course, you know, it makes it a little bit easier for us as well. You know, um, then we can just take take our time with it, I suppose. You know, so yeah, that's that's what that one's in for. Um, as I say, new technician's equipment there. Um, that's that's all his stuff there, ready to wear, uh, ready ready to ready to start work on Monday. Um, uh, so yeah, as what Marvin said a couple times, two new technicians. That's that's one of them. Uh, the other lads box, I think, is going to follow tomorrow or, or Friday. Um, uh, Fiat Ducato Motorhome, um, this one here, I mean, it, it's, it's, if you look at it, it's an 09 registered vehicle, but it is, it's, it's remarkably clean for its age. Um, so that's, that's that one, but we did, a, um, we did a little bit of work on it a while ago. Um, we MOT'd it, and then on the MOT, one of the MOT advisors was the back brakes. Um, so the customer, again, and you tend to find this with a lot of motorhome owners, um, even if it's you know not needed necessarily, they will get the advisories done. It's it's just like a common trend that we find. Um, so it 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 needed rear brakes as the advisory on, on on the MOT test. But when we did the rear brakes on it, there was a this caliper. Um, we, we felt it was just a little bit sticky. Um, so at, at the time, we we obviously stripped the slides down, um, and we applied some brake grease, etc. But it's it's just got a little bit of a niggle, a little bit of squeak from the side. So we've got it back. Um, we're going to check it tomorrow, um, see what's going on with the caliper. Um, possibly it might end up needing the caliper, but you know we'll, we'll have a look tomorrow, um, and then, then we'll we'll take it from there. Yeah. So that, that's what that's in for. Um, able to, uh, able alarms van. We know about that one. Um, that one's still ongoing. Um, still on with that one. Still checking the wire and etc. Because um, there's there's something. There's something going on with that one, so it's, we're, we're still still on with that. I haven't, haven't quite got the bottom of it as of yet. Um, again, Craigie, for, for a change, Craigie, go look at M Neps van. Uh, so and again, M Neps van, MOT failure, um, bottom ball joint, uh, and also this wheel bearing had collapsed on it. So if we go over to the, to the press head, um, the ball joint's done on, on that side, which was really straightforward. I think it was, yeah, with that one, Neps van. Um, again, another MOT from deer. Um, this one as well. Um, it, it, it had snapped the driver's side front strut, spring, sorry. Um, we weren't expecting to get the spring until tomorrow morning. Thankfully, it's arrived at four o'clock this afternoon. So um, the, the car was already pre-stripped and um, we've put it back together and that, that's good to go. So um, we were, this one probably you think wasn't probably going to be ready until about lunchtime tomorrow. Um, whereas now, obviously, it's ready sooner. So we'll give the customer a ring in the morning and get that car back and quicker, which is good, of course. Yeah, which is good, yeah. Um, nice little transit custom, this. Um, very, very clean van, lovely little van. Um, again, the customer's just purchased it, so it's getting a can Phantom. Again, we, we see a lot, um, Fords, Range Rovers, etc. cetera. Um, these are very, very highly stolen in the UK. Um, so the customer has just purchased this, purchased it yesterday. 
So they've picked it up, come straight here, I'll get a can phantom in over the next couple of days. Um, once well, a couple of other small jobs on it, uh, the reverse Parkinson's on, on quick and right. Um, and there's um, once, uh, I think it's the wiper blades as well, very, very small job. But the big thing is, you know, um, can phantom, um, that's getting one of them on. Just, just to make sure you're, you're doing everything you can or as much as you can, should I say, to, to stop it from being stolen. Um, Jamie's uh, Range Rover, again, off the back of the MOT that was done a couple of weeks ago. Um, there was a bit of work which was advised. Um, and I mean, this, this is a slightly older vehicle now, but it gets very well looked after. Um, so we're going to do some brake work, I think some bottom arms to go on it. Um, there's a couple of track control arms as well, the memory service is right. But it's going to get a bit, bit of work anyway, but there's a bit of work done on it. So that's getting started on Friday. Um, Friday, so we'll, we'll get that done from the beginning. It's just inside, really ready for the start. That, that's that one. Um, what's it like? Yeah, we're all right. Um, Uh, Transit, uh, connect, there's a connect these, I think these are connector or customs, whatever it is, um, add blue fault. Um, so it's be, it had to be recovered. The add blue fault on it has caused it to um, stop the vehicle. So it won't start. Um, now, whether or not it's it's got another fault on it, or it's just to the point whereby it's that confused, then, but you know, we can't get the van to start. Um, but it's with the problem with this is that you, you, you struggle is that is it an ad blue fault or is it the fact that it's just run out of ad blue and it's got that point because sometimes they can be difficult to get them to start up again. Um, so that that's what that's in for. But we'll, we'll carry on with that, do a little bit more work on that. I'm sure we'll get the bottom of that. We'll, we'll do a few of them. So it's 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 nothing nothing difficult. Um, they just take a little bit of time. They just take a little bit of time. Um, Ambulance is just about done. There's a couple of small, um, small things to finish off on that. Um, we'll get that the British Red Cross so that that one's done. Um, the Volvo, I'm not going to talk about that because you saw it in the in the workshop a couple of nights ago. Um, I think we're waiting for a turbo seal for that, which might actually be here now. Um, but we were, were waiting for a turbo seal, um, which Marvin ordered the other day. That's that's now here for it. So that one, it's it's a progress job. It's just a matter of getting back onto it and getting through it. Um, I can't remember, have we talked about this one before, Ed? I can't, I can't remember, no. Um, so, um, little, little mini petrol. Um, this engine here, it's they suffer a little bit. For, so, if you were to go to, to BMW Mini, um, we, I think you've heard us talk about PCV valves. It's the breather valve and the rotor cover. If you go to um, uh, BMW Mini, the PCV valve is part of the rocker cover, and you have to buy the rocker cover. I think they're about the retail about 260 quid plus the VAT. Um, but again, the, the, the good news is this: this is where I, I think the customers get a lot of help. Um, people then start manufacturing and making um, the components themselves. So again, with this, if, if I was to open the button, I say I've got the keys on us. The, the PCV valve is, is at the top left-hand side of the rocker cover, um, and you can get a kit off a kit for them. So you buy the kit rather than placing the whole rotor cover. The kit's about 30 quid plus the VAT or something like that. Um, but what happens with them, the, the PCV valve um, fails on them, and then that causes um, a condensation effect in the rotor cover, and then you get the oil emulsification. Um, and it really does look like caramel in, in the rotor cover. Um, what's then happened is that it's de they, they develop Vanos faults and they come up with camshaft sensor faults. And this one's done it, it, it did it um, uh, about six months ago and it's done it again um, so I think this time what we'll do is we'll, we'll take the rotor cover off uh, replace the valve clean everything out we'll clean the breather system into the block as well because that goes into there um, and try that um, and that, that's that's the next step problem with the problem with the faults like that is that sometimes they're not easy to get the bottom off um, but we'll do th the PCV valve is definitely sticking it's not working properly so again we cleaned it the last time um, but it will replace it this time and try it again and then get the customer to try it and probably get it back in a thousand miles just to see how it's progressed yeah so that, that, that's that one um, but that, with that um, that's had the underbody under sealed um, 
Again, uh, a slightly older, a little, it's a very, very tidy MX-5. Uh, we do, we've done a service and an MOT on it, a, a couple of jobs. Um, and the, I think on the MOT, there was one, again, one of the advisors was the, um, the underbody was showing sizes and corrosion. So what we've done is, it's brim and again, I think if, if you notice, well, if you refer back, gone back a couple minutes to the video, you saw the, um, the tins of the tins on the top of the, the, um, the press equipment. That's the old tins of the other underbody. Um, the, the I think it's Terra Seal or Terra Seal. Um, so that's how the, the underbody protected. Um, that's ready to go. The customer's picking that up tomorrow. Um, but it's it's a very very clean car. That um, very very clean, nice, nice uh, sort of car. Um, this is the one you saw um, the other day with the inlet manifold. Uh, that's now ready to go. Uh, just waiting for the for the customer to pick it up. Uh, so that that one's all good to go. Um, the van that's had the MOT repairs, um, you saw the coil, sorry, the leaf spring, I always say coil spring, because leaf spring snapped on the back. The mechanical repairs are done. Um, we're just in the middle of doing the welding now, so it needs some welding. Um, once we've got the welding done, again, that is, is ready to go back to the customer. Um, but um, it's it's out at the moment because we're, we're stuck for ramps because it needs to go on the four poster. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's, that's that one. Um, Freela uh, Freelander, yeah. So this one, um, we've replaced the flexi on this side, the flexi brake pipe, and repaired the, the rigid brake pipe as well. The customer had asked us to do the transmission fluids. So you've got a transfer box, an automatic transmission, and the rear differential, and the Haldex unit. Um, but when we come to put the car on the ramp and did the, the health check on it, the differential's leaking. So if you remember a few episodes ago, we had the Range Rover, I think it was a Sport or a Vogue, where the front pinion seal was leaking, and we, we sat at the desk and we, we went through the kit. These are a very, very similar setup, um, but to do these with, a, with that one that we showed you on the, on, the, on the desk, you can do them in situ. With these ones, you have to take the, the, the differential out. Um, so the differential kit consists of, it gets the two rings for the Haldex unit, um, it gets the O-ring, so the, the, the seal for the Haldex coupling. Um, then you get the, the I think there's uh, four bearings um, and four seals for the diff. So that'll get them all replaced. Um, and then we'll, we'll put that back together. Um, customers authorised that now. The bits will be with us tomorrow. Um, then once they're here tomorrow, uh, we'll get on with that and get that done. Um, hopefully have that back to them. I've, 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 I've given the customer... Um, like a provisional delivery date of probably Tuesday or Wednesday next week for that one. So that, that, that's that one's having. Um, the RAC van you know about. Um, this one here was service MOT. And you can see here it's got this, the tape on because um, it's had to have a windscreen replaced. Um, that's, so what happens is the, the windscreen's bonded in. And the, if you notice, any, if you ever see this on, that, that's what happens when the, the windscreen fit has replaced the screen. Um, put a bit of tape on and it's just to, just to really keep it in place. So that, that is now done again, ready to go um, back to the customer. Um, they're picking that up tomorrow. Um, Peugeot, um, this has had a problem on the knock sensor. So um, this one here, there's a, there's a software update from Peugeot. Um, so it's had the software update. We'll, we'll do a lot of these and again that, that, that van there um, and we've got an NES Windows one coming in next week. So what, what quite often happens with, with cars is that components have a, have a working window. Um, and then what, what happens is that the manufacturer will, so that, that there'll be a, a fault with, so for instance, on this one, it's a knock sensor. It's the same on the NES Windows van. Um, what will happen is from time to time, the manufacturer, will, so if they get a lot of knock sensor problems or a, or a specific problem or, on a specific thing, um, they'll look at it and the, what, what they, they, they say is that there's nothing actually wrong with the sensor. It's just the operating window that it works in. Um, so there's a lot of updates now just for to take that operating window and just expand it a little bit. Um, and then what that does is it just gives the, the knock sensor. So for example, if it's point 0.1, the knock sensor might go to 0 0.14. And that's actually fine when it comes to operating, but the control unit, the, the engine control unit, recognizes that as a problem. So what'll happen is that the, we'll just get a software patch, update the engine control unit, and it just widens that operating window. Um, quite, quite a quite a comp practice that. Um, so that one's, that one's had it. Um, that one is getting it tomorrow. Um, 
Yeah. And like I say, there's an Ace Windows van which has come back next week. That one will get one as well. Um, and that's that, that, that's what that one's for. As I say, that's, that's what the St John's ambulance is for. Um, T11 bot. You see this one a lot in our videos. An absolute phenomenal bit of kit. Um, absolutely, but um, it's developed a misfire. So we've got a fault on um, two of the injectors. I'm not sure what the numbers are, but they are on the same reel. So with it being the V, you've got a, you know four injectors per side. Um, but it's got a it's got a fault on two of the injectors. The Mercedes give you five hours to remove and refit the fuel reel to put the injectors in. Um, so what we're going to do is we just want to make sure. Because again, like I said, with it with it with the, the Adam in there what we'll try and minimise is downtime and obviously expense to the customer. Um, so before we commit to saying, look, it needs two injectors in, um, what we'll do is we'll just, we're going to check the check the other two as well um, and then go to the customer and make the decision whether or not it's it's fundamental, it, it's better off for them to put the other two in as well. Um, we can see on the on the diagnostic tool, two of the injectors, the, um, so what you look at is on a petrol car, you look at the injection time. The, the time is out massively to the other six on them too, that, that's, that's faulty, hence it's causing the misfire. Um, what we think's happening there is obviously it's keeping the injector open too long, overfueling in effect, and then what happens is it's, you know, it causes misfires. Um, so, like, like I say with that, we just want to make sure, we, you know, uh, just double check what, you know, double check what, what, what findings, if you like, what diagnosis, and then before we go back, and then we'll, then we'll speak to the customer uh, tomorrow, uh, and give them my findings, then obviously come up with a plan and a decision from there. Um, and I think that's really it, Ed, because the, the, the rest of the stuff um, is pretty much pretty much from ongoing. That's the little Suzuki. Um, as you can see, that, that's, that was on the, on the ramp in the last few of our videos. That is now up and running. Um, there's, there's an exhaust there to put on it. Needs the exhaust on. And then what we'll do with that is um, we'll probably get it road legal, i.e. taxed. Make sure, I think the MOT is on it, tax and insured, and then we'll put a few miles on that and then decide what to do after that. Um, we're in two minds what to do with that because it's a cracking little car. Um, like I say, I mean, luckily we managed to get a second hand cylinder head for it. Um, but um, we might be use, using that as a courtesy car. Um, that's the idea at the moment. Uh, so that's that one. Um, that one's got a, a water ingress problem. Um, you can't really see because the car's locked. But, nah, it's not very good. So this, this here is a, is a canopy. Um, you, you could take that off and then you'd have the flat bed. On the canopy on the back of the cab here, and you may be able to come in and see it, there's a, there's a seal there mm -hmm. um, with that. Um, it's leaking in through the seal, and it's what the, the problem is to get into the seal and take it off, it's got to come out this way. Um, and that's the difficulty because to do that, then you're taking the hard top off. So we're, we're trying our best to seal in situ. I must admit, it's, it's not really working very well because you can't get in to seal it very well um, because of the, because of the access to it. So um, the customer would hopefully like this back tomorrow, but I, th I think we're probably going to have to ring them and just make them aware that we are still on with it. The next step is, I've got a suspicion, probably the, the hard top say they're going to have to come off or it's going to have to be moved back so it can gain access to that just to get in and seal it properly. Um, I think it's there's a, there's a bit of information on the internet about them leaking in through there, and sure enough, this one is. But the difficulty, like, like I say, if, if you had another one with just the, 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 the flat bed, it would be a lot easier, you could get into it. But without that having the canopy on, it's it, it's difficult, it's difficult, yeah. Um, th this one here is a lovely, I, th I think, again, you've seen this in a couple of our videos. Um, this is one of the last... Discovery 4s, I think it was produced. Um, it does have a, a, a lot of options on it. It's got the TVs in the back of the seats and whatever. Um, very, very nice car, very nice specification, but there's a possibility that this might have suffered from the, um, the crank problems that they have. Um, but again, that got recovered on um, over the weekend. I think it was Sunday. It was, in, it was here Monday morning when we came in. Haven't had a chance to have a look at it as of yet. But unfortunately, um, I, I do think that's got the um, got the crank problem, terminal problem, unfortunately, but, uh, which is an absolute shame because, I mean, it's, a, it's just a smashing car, that. And this is where it becomes difficult because for all that the, the car is in very, very good condition, um, to put an engine in one of these looking against the, the actual value that it's worth, 
it it just becomes uneconomical. Um, however, like I say, we, we suspect it's that. But of course, as always, we'll confirm our findings, um, make sure it is that, and then we'll go back to the customer, and then we'll, again we'll come up with a plan with that, and that that is that. So, so yeah, that is. Um, a couple of vehicles on the, on the on the back of the the, the wagon there. Um, we've got a a, a a beetle there, which is um, which is partially back together. It's it's been it's been restored. We're going to put a wiring harness, and there's a wiring harness to go into that. Uh, that that was picked up yesterday. So we'll put the wiring harness in. Then it'll go back to the customer, uh, and they, they they're going to finish off. You can probably see from here. Obviously, there's, there's no bonnet or etc. on. Um, if you notice, the car's very high because of the engine. Whatever's out of it, I think there's no engine in the back there. Um, And again, um, there's a van on the back there, uh, one northeast uh, van which is broken down, so that got recovered in, so um, that needs looking at. Um, and that, that is pretty much it. Um, a, a lot going on this week. Uh, we're only at Wednesday. Um, we've done it. We've, we've getting through a lot this week already. Um, got a lads on on a way on train at the minute, so it is it is quiet in the um, the workshop down. Uh, we've got two two or three of the lads we on training. Um, you know, we, we, look, we like to invest in people, we like to invest in, in training. Um, we're using, um, we're using L, LU, uh, L, um, Eurocar Pots, um, their training platform at the minute. Got a great facility in Sunderland. Um, the courses look very, very good. Um, and, you know, the, the courses look fundamentally good. So we've, um, we've paid for a package for the technicians. They're booked on um, three or four courses each over the next few months. So there we get that they've started that now, um, and they'll complete them before Christmas. I think one of them runs in, in the beginning of next year, but uh, yeah, we'll do that because because um, I mean everybody needs training. You know, we, we were just talking earlier, and uh, you know, I think training helps immensely. So that, that's why we that. So because of that, obviously the, the workshop's a little bit a little bit quieter. It doesn't look at that way. I know it looks as busy as ever, but um, you, you know we we are quieter from from a staff level, um, and that, that that's really it. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Is that right? No, I think that's it. Yeah, I think I think we'll run through everything. So thank you, everybody. Thank you again. Um, time to go home, I think. It's been a long day. Um, so once again, thank you for watching. Um, we'll see you tomorrow. Um, but again, as always, please, thank you very much. Like, subscribe. You know, we're getting very, very close. What are we now, Ed, for the 20, 21, yeah, 21,000 followers? Um, the more it goes up, and the more that are on there and all them people are on there, the, you know, it's something shooting you when it when a car. Um, so please, you know, keep on hitting that like button, hit, hit that subscribe button. Um, keep on giving us feedback as well. Hopefully uh, you're still enjoying the content. Of course, that, 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 that's important. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll see you guys, uh, okay, see you guys tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Good morning. It's Thursday and I'm just literally pulling on the Team Valley. Um, so all the staff are on a training course again today. They were on yesterday and today. Um, so it's literally only me and Paul in the workshop. Excuse me, and Gary and Jimmy on the front desk. So I wouldn't say there was loads of work getting done. Um, yesterday was a lot of MOTs and couple of service things, just uh, customers who were already booked in, we couldn't really move them. Um, and today, I'm not quite sure what I've got on to be fair. Hopefully, it'll, not too much, so I can get a bit of paperwork done. Um, I had a look at this car I'm driving now last night. It's a GL, GLS 63, I think it is. Um, it's going to be a hard misfire. I had a bit of play around with coil packs, changed a couple of things over. Took a home last night. Seems to be running fine, so give this back to the customer this morning because he's absolutely desperate for a bike. He's got a, a couple of hospital appointments he needs to go to. But it's running perfect. Base car, uh, base car to drive actually. This is the same as the white. GL63 that we had in the video as well. I'll see him edge anyway. But I'm just literally pulling at the garage now. So hopefully I will see you this afternoon. Cheers.
right, I'm just on a little stock take mission. Um, there's not that many different units and yards down in Team Valley that I can't actually remember where everything is or what is even there. Um, so I decided we're going to do a little stock take, see what we've got. Um, just before the lads start on Monday, because the day was pretty heavy loaded already. Um, but there's a lot more to dairy in and factor in the, this next quarter's dairy really. Um, we normally look at the dairy quarter by quarter rather than like some garages I think look at it. I mean some uh, look at it day by day. Uh, lucky enough we look at it quarter by quarter and we're going to have to start putting work in for um, definitely towards next month um, and the month after because we've got a couple of cars that we've ended up buying and um, what normally happens is I'll buy the car because it's beyond you know, economical repair or for, certainly is for the customer the customer doesn't want to repair it they bought a new car maybe um, and then what I should do is get it fixed and get it sold and make a profit on it straight away instead I always end up leaving it it sits around does absolutely nothing it costs more than what we thought to fix it and then um, we don't make a profit on it that's the <laughs> excuse me that's it that's always it that's what ends up happening so hopefully more staff that won't happen I'll be able to um, get my own crap through the workshop a little bit quicker. And there's even some of our cars, like our the cars that we own, some of those need doing the you know the a lot of the cars need service definitely not on mileage, but you need to put on time they do because they don't do any miles at all. Um well even this Mustang this is this is uh three and a half year old, it's got four thousand miles, it's had three services in its life. So that's getting serviced every thousand miles. If anything goes wrong with this engine, this uh, Ford's got a big problem on the hands, I think. Um, so I'm just going to head to one of the yards. I'll take a photo of all the cars. Me and Gary will go through the list and then I'll go to one of the storage units. I'll also have a look in there, see what's there. And there's another yard. We'll have a look in there and see what's left in there. Um, I need to think of a little system of, uh, of how to keep a track on what's there and what's not. But I'll have a little look around and then no doubt me and Gary will see you later. Hello and welcome to the noisiest car in the planet, the Citroen Ami. So I've just been to Citroen, get one on test drive. Um, I'm thinking about um, changing these for the, our Curtis cars. Obviously it's good for the very electric and all that shit. Um, and they're a cool looking car, I'll show you the outside. But now I've drove it, Jesus Christ. I don't think our customers will ever come back. So I think I might buy maybe one, just for the crack like, but this um, this is a strange little car. It feels like something I'll be giving it Legoland to go around a little course in. Like it's just weird. I don't know what it is about, it makes funny little noises. It only does 28 miles an hour. Everywhere you go, it feels like it's going to tip over. Um, but there is something quite cool-ish about it, I think. Um, I'm just going to be heading back on the TV now. If it wasn't, I think if I put it, it's doing 28 miles an hour, but I think if I put it in neutral, then we'll let it roll. Oh. 30, 31, 32, 33, 33 flat out. Now I'll put it back in the drive. It's only got 78 miles on the clock. It's just a weird, weird little car. But, like I say, it's, there's something about it, it's cool. But I just don't know what. I don't know what's cool about it, it's just so strange. Um, I do think it's got a radio, there's three buttons, one's for heater, one's for a fan, and one's for, um, really hell, 
I think it should be a button to put you back on your roof, uh, back on your wheels after you've took it over. Go over the hazards. Apart from that, that's it. Nothing in this car. Uh, the windows are like a manual thing. Push that and force that out like a little 2 CV. The mirrors are just like off a little something you put in your pedal bike. But I suppose it makes you smile for five minutes. It was strange getting out of a Range Rover and getting to this, I'll tell you that for nothing. Um, well, I think I've maybe decided that I'm not going to buy one because 28 miles an hour in front of the floor is a very, very strange feeling. Um, but, we'll see how it goes on. It's got me some good point about it. seats as well. I can't see me big side getting in here like but I think it definitely would roll over there. Right, there's a little lammy. Dun -dun. It's got some quirky little features. Look at that. Well, that's the same door on that side, apparently. Is it on that side? Is that one opens from the front or the one opens from the back? I think uh, on the way down I might have lost the wheel trim. But I'm still undecided whether I want to buy one. There's Big Jimmy. Look at this thing. Jimmy, should we buy one? Absolutely. Oh, there we go. It's decided. Oh shit, look who's coming. Uh oh. It's mine fear. <laughs> ah! Look at that! Look at that! Did you enjoy it, guys? Yeah, it was mint, I. I think I actually got the wheel spin as well. Oh, the wheel spin. Did you oh. see the hard brake turn? No, I could. That was threatening case of tipped orange. I saw that. Um, I saw that old that bloke's in Monaco, I think, uh, one, and he puts it on its side, and I thought, bloop. oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to explain that when we take it back. But in saying that, I think it's plastic, so it'll probably just pop out. Wah, 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 wah. I think it's cool, mate. Oh, yeah. It's a great one of them. It's even by the other side of it. I think we'll shock get bored, like. Oh. I think it'll end up like that little thing up the top of there, on top of the yeah, container. No, the space over there, on that container. Yeah, we'll get up there. Oh, yeah. I think we'll turn it, I think we'll be able to lift that up there. Whoa, the wing's coming off. Hey, you think you got on two wheels? Yeah, easy. Me and Jim look at a couple of right plugs at the burger, man. Didn't know how to get rid of it. I have to, you do have to stick your arm into the wind and open it from the outside. Yeah, hold on, I think I'll get Alvi to push it on two wheels. I don't know, like... Oh, I think the roof's going to come off as well. Does that, um... <laughs> Easy. <laughs> is that, um, I don't feel very safe there now. <laughs> is that looking down when the corner sees? Aye. Look at Jimmy, the cameraman. <laughs> Unbelievable. What time is the bit ready, Jimmy? 20 past one. Sounds. Do I tell them? Um... Aye, I'll let them know. I will let them know. Right, so. I think I'll have to take this back after lunch. And I'll, uh, I've asked to buy one, but unfortunately they said you can only test drive one here. You've got to order them online. Right, welcome to Saturday. It is quarter three on Saturday afternoon. I didn't get any recording done yesterday. It was impossible. 
there's so much work and so much prep for the um, new techs coming in. So you can have a quick look around the workshop. There's not a car in here at the minute. Whole floor's been cleaned, everything's been stripped back. All the benches out, all the toolboxes have been taken out. Um, so we'll go for a little wander. Everything around here. So basically pulled everything out. All the aircon machines, all the oil drainers, everything's been pulled out. Scrubbed, floor cleaned with the, the right on floor cleaner or the little push along one. We've also moved a few things around. So this is Phil, new guy's box, he starts Monday. And this is Sean's box, and that's his little wall cart there. So we've moved a few things around, but we've still got a bench in the middle with the vice on. All the ramps have all been cleaned down. Uh, everything but my box, I think, because that's still got loads of crap all over it. But if you do that there, look, it looks amazing. There you go, look, it's clean. Um, then we've moving Ken's box down here. And then we've shuffled Callum's box up a little bit. And Paul's box that was up there has ended up down here. So if you do watch this, Paul, all this mess here needs to go into the box. That's why you have drawers. Um, we're going to move the big floor cleaner at night time, I think, inside of the... Uh, that's going to go in the bike room, just to keep a bit of space here. We're probably going to lose one of those benches. So we've got room for the when we're using the oil drainer. That compressor's not staying here, that's going away. Um, pretty much, every, well, everything's been cleaned, pulled out. Everything should be pretty good now. We, um, on the last thing I did on Thursday, I think was the Ami, Citroen Ami. Um, so I ended up going back after the test drive and we bought one for, well, for the garage really. Um, I was a little bit undecided and then I spoke to the guys at Sherwood Citroen and they are really good, uh, they're a really good dealership. Got on instantly with them there. Um, they obviously, Told me all the benefits of those cars, not just the ones I'd found out driving it for an hour. Um, and it's an amazing little car. And the more I drove it, the more I was smiling. And the only downside I can see is there's no radio. I hate driving with no radio. There's no radio, no electric windows. There is nothing in that car. So the guy just said, basically, everyone just puts a little Bluetooth speaker on the middle of the dash. And that's it. That's what everybody does. Um, I've joined a couple of little Ami Facebook groups and some people have got some good ideas. Um, so that car is actually ready to pick up. We're going to pick it up possibly uh, Monday slash Tuesday, just whenever I get five minutes really. Hopefully once the new techs are settling on Monday. So on Monday we're going to have um, Ken, Callum, Andy, Josh, Phil and Sean. So there should be six lads in here. Um, there's nine ramps, there's plenty of ramps to go at. And then hopefully once they're all settled, just before lunch I'll go off and pick up the new Ami. They've done, so Sherwood Citroen done is an amazing deal. So if you ever need uh, anything, I think they do Citroen, Peugeot, uh, Jeep, not Jeep, sorry. The Citroen, Peugeot and uh, Suzuki. So if you need any of those, make sure you head up towards Sherwoods and uh, mention that you've seen this video and hopefully they'll sort you a good deal. The, like I say, the dealer's a really good deal. The salesman, Max, I was his fourth car that he's um, he's ever sold, I think. And he was a really good lad, very, very young, but good, knew his job inside out. Um, also sport the manager, who's got a wealth of knowledge as well, to be fair. And they basically said that um, we could do a couple of reviews on their cars, which would be good. Um, Peugeot's, the, the, the Peugeot's, if I think of oh, Peugeot hot hatch, I would think 205 GTI. But I'm assuming now they've come on a long way since then. Um, I don't know if they, they didn't have a bad name. They were just like a, a cheap French car, I suppose. But now when you see some of them in the showroom, they're, they're unbelievable. They've got all the technology and all the comforts of the big German uh, German brands. I'm not going to bother walking outside just because there's, there's just a massive cars. But before I go tonight, I'm going to load up the ramps for Monday morning just so the guys can just walk straight in and get on with it. Um, we're on 21,000 subscribers now, so remember we're only 4,000 away, so unlucky for somebody, but one of these guys who works here is going to have to work on that discovery, because I don't think I'll have time. But that car will get done, and at 25,000 subscribers, someone else is going to win it. So remember, like, share, subscribe, we'll pick a winner from the one of the 25,000 people, um, and we'll, we'll get our car to you, and like I said, we'll chuck you in some money to 
Toxic Fear. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I think that's it for this week. Thanks very much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully the next episode that you see, we'll have that little Sitter and Abbey. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Car's fixed, car's left, car right, get him right. Car fixed, car's left, car right, get him right. Car's fixed, car's left, car's right, get him right. Car's fixed, car's left. Cause right, yeah. It's an everyday gate, all fixed, called in. I don't roll around on no six. I like to keep it up with the fifth. I don't mind you, car fix. I know garage not from front mine. My family goes there all the time. Sometimes get discount if you're a regular one. Mechanics to work, eight to five. If you bring it work, they can work all night. They all that pieces, delivery comes right. Even if it's a mix light, spin that thing right back. Fixing the wheels and pads. Get your service check, date and a signature sign. Get you MT to a green light. Trust me, the work is tight. You can ask my girl Ralph, he'll be in for a date in time. And if you're late, they'll say it's fine Just make sure you arrive on time Revving cars till you hear that chime If you don't rev, then you gotta define Take a break when it's lunchtime Team Valley MOT, my car's broke down, can you come and fix it? Where you at? Team Valley MOT, my car's broke down, can you come and fix it? Where you at? Team Valley MOT, my car's broke down, can you come and fix it? Where you at? Team Valley MOT, my car's broke down, can you come and fix it? Where you at? Team Valley MOT, my car's broke down, can you come and fix it? Where you at? My car's broke down I need a repair right now Let me call Jake, my friend who is around He won't come if he's not around So I gotta call Team Valley MOT But I don't do that OST, let's take the situation seriously I rap too hard, don't be mad at me Team Valley MOT, my car's broke down Can you come and fix it? Where you at? Team Valley MOT, my car's broke down Can you come and fix it? Where you at? Team Valley MOT, my car's broke down Can you come and fix it? Where you at? Team Valley MOT, my car's broke down Can you come and fix it? Where you at? 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 Where you at?